So I um I left off with the question that your cycles and factors um you were speaking about like how people get into the position where they are having financial hardships that um those of us who are better off or those people who are in um financial security that that is fickle because they could be just a car accident or not just a car accident away or you know anything could happen and you can be now um, in a financial hardship. So I just wanted to discuss that a little further and, and where that came from with your own experience. Um, so I went through a situation where um, I was traveling like 45 minutes to an hour to get to work and I started having car troubles. And, um, you know, like employers don't really care what you have to do. It was like, well, you can't catch a ride with anyone. You can't do this. I'm like, no, bro, like, it's just me. Right. So I worked out something where I had bought this car for, like, $500. Mm -hmm. And I was like, it was really a steal, though, because the car actually was a good car. And I had found a contract um, in Florida doing something similar to what I was doing, uh, being a supervisor at a, um, a warehouse that was just up and going. And since I had so much experience, they offer me a contract just to come and help them get it together right and thanksgiving day um i got into a car accident i got t-boned by a lady mm. it was no fault of my own but it literally ruined everything that i had going on right um and i had to relocate my family back to uh georgia uh you know it take forever for those settlement checks to come back Mm -hmm. uh, it take forever for you to be able to get back on your feet again. I couldn't work because I had sustained like some acute back injury and whiplash and stuff like that. Right. So I was going to chiropractor, going to physical therapy. And it's like, I have been working, feel like I'm climbing up the ladder, feel like I'm climbing and just in an instant, mm -hmm. everything changes. And it literally, I mean, you know, it took me two and a half years to recover from that. Right. Um, not only financially, just on a stability standpoint, because, you know, I had to pick up jobs here and there. Mm -hmm. I got into trucking. But, you know, when you first start out in, in any industry, you're not getting paid top dollar. Mm -hmm. So, you know, um, my whole thing is like, is as secure as you may feel like you are. Um, you know, a parent gets sick and you need to go back home to take care of your parent. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what if your job isn't transferable? Uh, you know, it's a lot of different things that can affect this day-to-day -day thing. Like, it's almost like, you know, only the people in the top 1% are building with, with with bricks. We're out here building with sticks and straw. You know what I mean? Mud and, and clay and shit. Yeah, <laughs> on God. So, and we don't realize how close we are to one, one major incident affecting everything that we have going on. Right. And just from my experiences with that, <clears throat> I know that, like, I know how dangerous my job is. I know that I'm a truck driver, but I'm also on the road with thousands of cars, cars every day. Mm -hmm. And anybody that isn't paying attention, if they cause me to have to swerve or they cause me to get in an accident where I lose control of my vehicle, that could end my life. Mm -hmm. And people aren't, I think that, it's good to hope for the best, but these are realities for people all over the world. Uh, like, I talked to a guy downtown Atlanta, um, and he was asking me for money, and it was something about his like spirit. I was just like, let me, let me, let me pick and pry with this guy. I was like, hey man, how you end up out here? Because he he didn't seem to be erratic in any type of way. I mean. Mm -hmm. It was just something about him. So I asked him and he got, in a, he was a construction foreman. He was on a job and something fell and hit him in, and messed his back up. And he got addicted to opioids mm -hmm. and he lost his family. And then he lost his house and he lost his car. But because he was a drug addict, nobody trusted him. Nobody wanted to help right. him. And he like, man, like, you know, three months before that, everybody was always calling on me to Help, help them out, mm -hmm. you know, help them out of their binds. And, you know, I was the man, you know what I mean? Like I had 
three beautiful kids, a wife. We had a nice house, cul-de-sac house, you know. I had a brand new truck and he was like, one instance just took everything away and it changed the course of my life forever. Right. He was like, did, he was like, you know, I take responsibility for the place that I, the, the part that I played in becoming addicted because, you know, that is a mental thing. But he was like, I was in so much pain. You know what I mean? So it's right. like, how, how, you know, all of this stuff is kind of propped up on sticks and straw. Mm hmm. And the big bad wolf is uh, <laughs> America oh, blowing yeah, your house oh down, blowing oh your God. shit down, <laughs> blowing your shit. Come blow your shit down if they want to. And a right. lot of people's shit is getting blown down right now. Right, and I think a lot of people's fix for that is um, side hustling and this idea of making that basically, you know, the second job or the extra stream of income. And I thought something interesting um, that you shared on your TikTok was like. Not everybody wakes up wanting and needing to think about what dollar they're going to make or the next dollar. Absolutely. And Absolutely. that resonated with me so much because for so long, I thought, dang, what's wrong with me that I ain't the kind of hustler that everybody right, else said right, that you're right, supposed right, right. to be. It didn't feel natural for me. It doesn't feel good for me to wake up and feel like, dang, I got to hustle my life away just to be able to sustain or have anything of value. So I wanted to ask you, like, for those of us who identify with this thought, like, yo, I just want to work and, 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 and enjoy my life, not just, you know, work, work, work and get to these heights. Like, how do you combat that in your mind with knowing that, honestly, it is going to be hard with just being able to have those things on one source of income? I think... Sometimes you could be very far behind the eight ball and that may spark this hustle in you. Mm -hmm. And anybody that gets sparked with that hustle and they make something shake, my hats is off to them. But I think that people just need to be very self-aware. I knew that I wasn't uh, uh, like the type of person that was extremely entrepreneurial and wanted to, you know, dream up this idea. Um, even with my music or my art, I used to have ambitions to be famous and stuff like that, but those have subsided because like, I want something to myself. Mm -hmm. So I understand like, I do understand the need in some instances for another stream of income. But at the same time, I just subscribe to this thing where it's like a hamster wheel. It's like, how far are you really getting ahead mm -hmm. with this side hustle? Because if it's a side hustle, you still have a job. So it ain't too profitable if you still need that nine to five source fixed income. And also it's just like, how long are you gonna work yourself to death and spend all your time learning a new trade, spend mm -hmm. all your time learning a new skill uh, that's not even gonna be able to compensate all of your bills, all of your responsibilities, but it's just something on the side. So mm -hmm. you saying it's a side hustle, but it's really a second job. You working two jobs out here. Right. And then you trying to like, you know, that's why like scams uh, succeed. That's why like wake up now and, you know, any of those other scams like Forex and stuff like that. That's why those things succeed because people are in need. People can't make things shake with one stream of income. And right. um, I would say that like, in, in a sense, it's a responsibility for your parents to help you be self-aware so that in your formative years, 18 to 22, 18 to 25, you are pushing yourself towards a goal that is actually feasible for you, but also something that you can see yourself enjoying doing. Mm -hmm. But on the other side of that, it's just like our needs should not be such a commodity. You know, part, food, yeah. food, shelter, and water are basic human needs. And these things shouldn't be so commoditized. Like, nobody should need two jobs for their necessities. Do you understand right. what I'm saying? And it's like, if we are so civilized and we are uh, out of our primitive state, uh, our success shouldn't measure our, like, we shouldn't have to have a good catch in order to eat. You know what I mean? We're past mm -hmm. that. You know, we're not hunting anymore. We're not gathering anymore. And 
people need to be taken care of and like the way that you know like I consider myself extremely blessed like I I know that I saw a way through truck driving but not everybody not gonna want to get on that road and make those sacrifices exactly. and I understand that so in, in in a in a in a way I really don't know mm-hmm. what other people can do I know how I found a way out but right. I know that everybody else ain't going to be no truck driver. And I, I like, I still got friends at this age, 30, 31, 32, still sell drugs and they scam and they do this and that. And they're opting out of the nine to five life. And mm-hmm. even that is fickle because they can't go buy a house. They can't, you know, they can't do anything to really participate in society because they're living on the outskirts of it. They're right? living on the outskirts of it. Right. So, you know, I, they may look good, but. Mm-hmm. How much yeah. are they really contributing to it besides the, the you know, the st- crime statistics that like may be the only thing they really com- com- are, are contributing to? Right. I, I think um, I knew that's where we were going to go. The answer we were going to get to with that, because it, it has to start with understanding how it works for you. And I think with my journey, I realized that the trades and the different education that I pick up is going to be in things that I believe in. So right. that if I do have to do this quote unquote side hustle in, that is going to be something that I believe in. It's going to be something that's going to enhance my life in the right direction. I'm Absolutely. not just hustling for the dollar. I right. am be hustling for the experience. I am be hustling for the more peaceful life because I know that enjoyment doesn't just come from money because the value of that changes all the time. We, we're right. seeing that right now. Absolutely. You know, so if you're just hustling for the money, you're going to burn yourself out. And I've seen it even in the, the recent trade that I got pretty much people saying oh yeah this would be my additional stream of income and then by the end of the program you just like dang i don't i'm tired of doing this already yeah yeah you know what I'm saying? because you, you yeah. came in and you're not passionate about it but you you're trying to make you know the money which i get you know and money some people, is not enough of a motivator it's, it's not. not for me and, and I, not that it is for some not, people not for me either like i yeah. i used to always downplay myself like Mm-hmm. Damn, bro! Like, if I just gave a fuck about money a little bit more, me too. <laughs> but I was there in my early twenties. I I chose whatever I did, whatever job I chose, whatever you know. What I'm saying that was gonna get me the money, that was gonna help me pay my bills and do whatever. And I was miserable. I used to change yeah. job, jobs so often because I'm in a job I don't believe in, I don't find interest in. To me, I'm just like I'm looking at people like. Y'all really think I'm about to make this a, a whole family like that? No, it's not important to me. I'm gonna I give you my best. About this. And that doesn't. I'm a very hard worker, and I know the value of who I am as a worker. So I'm just like, I'm not about to be in these different industries, these corporations, these jobs. That I mean, you do what you got to do, but also find your wiggle room. <laughs> like, Absolutely. find your wiggle room because that was the thing. I'm like, I'm expanding what I can do in this life so if things don't work out with massage therapy I can switch over to counseling but if counseling don't work out I got a little bachelor's degree to fall back on none of that work out military still option so it's just like I'm hustling for the freedom that comes with having options not right. necessarily for the dollar amount right. that they provide so it's, it's all about you know um doing what works for you because not everybody is a hustler in the traditional mindset. I think if you pull up my resume right now, it's going to look like I've been hustling for the last 10, 12 years. You know what I'm saying? Mine too. You know Mine what I'm too. saying? It's going to look Mine like too. that. But within the, the more recent years, my mindset has changed so much that it's just like, nah, it's, yeah. It's been steady. It's, <laughs> it's been steady. steady. Yeah, because it's, because more than ever believed in this thing of like, <clears throat> this whole family thing that they try to present to you, mm-hmm. right? They always want to say, oh, we're a family. Oh, we want to show our appreciation by giving y'all some pizza. Like, bye. If you don't give me a raise. <laughs> bye. If a I living get... wage. And, and more than 30 cents. Because what that's doing for me? Now I need $3, bro. Let me get $3. Let me hold some. Listen, when I was at Burger King, and that was like my first job. And I think I worked at it again when I was in college. And I remember going from $7.25 to $7.50. Boy, I thought it was something. Oh, you thought you were lit. <laughs> it was something, bro. They had you fooled. <laughs> but it wasn't even a company. It was the fact that federally, 
the new minimum wage was seven fifty. Yeah, exactly. So it wasn't even the decision that they made. Right. And that's the thing. It's like you know, I feel like I found something that I can do because, like, I, I don't really like the. I don't like the culture of work. I don't mm-hmm. like. I don't Thank like you. talking. Yeah, I, and I, I don't like also. It's rough when you twenty twenty one. And you're driving a Fort Lift, and your coworker is 55 years old driving a Fort Lift, and you know they only make like a dollar or two extra than you. Yo. And it's like, and it's like, is this my future? Like, is this? And I, you know, for some reason, those people in the older generation, it, it seemed like they just make it work. But like, I'm like, bro, realistically, bro, this ain't it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You had to do this 30 years to make it work. For you now at 55 right. but like i'm 22 bro and i don't want to work for 30 years to make it work i don't want to work for 30 years to feel comfortable like mm-hmm. oh my wife finally got a job at the post office and i'm up here you know i'm up here driving for lifts but i've been here 10 years so mm-hmm. i make 15 dollars and you make 12 but like bro that ain't much of no difference bro that's right three dollars and you probably got like, more life responsibilities at your age than I do at mine. <laughs> so and like, on top of that, like, imagine how much money you didn't make the company in your 20 years. Exactly. I, and I, that you don't get to share. You don't get to take partake in any of that. And you've been on that same schedule for, you know what I'm saying? Like, your, your yeah. life is basically dictated it, to you. It's, it's, it's a lot. So I understand people wanting to go out and be entrepreneurial and, and have different, you know, lanes that they're in. I get it. I am that person. I just do it in a different way. Um, and for different reasons, but I'll never forget one of my supervisors. She pulled me to the side one day, cause you know, like I said, it don't matter whether I'm at flipping burgers at Burger King or if I'm at a corporate job. I'm giving the same amount of like hard work. Like that's just my integrity in it. But I remember she pulled me to the side and she was gushing about my work ethic and how she can see me being in her position um, after, you know, years or whatever. And she was saying how she had been there for so long and she was putting her daughter through college and I was just like you here 48 hours 50 hours 60 hours a week I'm not doing this yeah fact <laughs> I let nah, her this talk ain't, this ain't like right. bro, this ain't this one is not ambitious at all like no. <laughs> this is what not, not to me like this ain't where 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 my ambitions is leading me um this is just like a stepping stone for me right. and like I knew, I knew for a fact when I got my CDL, I'm going to eat shit for like a year. Oh, yeah. I know I'm not going to make no money. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and, you know, it's various things that play into that. For one, you don't know no better. For two, uh, you can't qualify for good enough insurance. But mm-hmm. the company takes a lot of the risk in your first year. I understand all that. And, you know, I wasn't really making that much money, but I was like, if I stay down with it, big picture mm-hmm. i'll be where i'm at now you know what i mean i'll be right. uh able to afford myself different opportunities but my mentality towards money has changed a lot too where it's not everything to me it's not i don't need this thing like i don't need mm-hmm. this and that thing i don't need the next big thing it's like you know i need to make sure my kids straight and i need to make sure that i'm doing stuff that is allowing me to have some sense of like freedom and happiness so i'm I'm gone right. rap you know what i mean because mm-hmm. rap is therapeutic to me right. so i'm gone i'm gone rap i'm gone create art i'm gone you know create different designs for different things because that's what i enjoy doing at my core um and i'm just glad that i have put myself in a position to be able to afford to do the things that i enjoy without trying to monetize them. uh yeah let's say monetize because sometimes trying to monetize every single thing that you create takes all the spirit out of it and and that's that's one thing that I I was one time I was wrapped up with trying to do that with LBF and then I realized I was like this is I'm not doing this (laughs) I'm not it's gonna be what it is if it picks up it picks up and even then hopefully I have the strength in in the team around me that allows me to still do it in my own way because I'm not ever trying to transform something that I put my stamp and my hard work and my love into for a dollar when and it changes the the energy around it. You know what I'm saying? Like once you monetize, sometimes you become a slave to that dollar amount. 
you become a slave to the whole like consistency content consistency thing and yeah, that was something i shared oh, you gotta too. be posting three to five mm-hmm. times a day like fam what am i gonna be doing three to five times a day on the internet right. every day right I'm, I'm, I'm not even on the internet every single day and that was the thing i when i first started going viral on tiktok i had so many people was like okay what's the next step what are you doing what are you doing? I'm just creating, like, yeah, and like sharing and, and it. Why I like, gotta be stop. something else? And that's that system too, bro. And that's the system. That's a byproduct of the system as well. It's mm-hmm. like people even try to make people try to insert the grind on you. Like, bro, just let oh me my God. do what I'm doing, bro. Let me tell you, I've had some people that really like get irritated with me because I don't understand this whole hustle mentality or. You know what I'm saying? You can't you can't call me lazy because you see my work ethic. Right, right, so right. You can't even call me that, but you don't know what to call me because I'm not adopting the mindset that you have. So you're it's not, just you're like you're not uh, addicted to the dollar, like right. And like it's once okay. As a person who was once like so focused on getting money mm-hmm. and have broke that spell, um, I've learned that like. The less I care about the dollar amount on things, the less I care about how this is going to make me some money, the more opportunities I get presented with to make money. Mm-hmm. But it's not this thing where it's so strenuous. And also, like, once that spell is broken, it's very hard to go back because, yeah. like, it was hard for me to even get hypnotized in the first place because I never, I always thought it was something wrong with me. And so I bought in to mm-hmm. a system. Even when I was in the street, it's like, I wasn't just this like natural born hustler. It was like, I was doing this out of necessity. And then when it was like, oh no, nah, this come with too much. Like I keep getting locked up. I always got a case. I got to go to probation. Right. I don't know if dude trying to rob me or dude really my friend. Being a criminal just, is expensive in this system. It's so expensive. <laughs> and it costs you years of your life because mm-hmm. you know, even when you reform yourself, you still have to carry the that stamp you know what I mean right. you still are a criminal in the eyes of your employer and your your eyes of the law whoever you know what I mean in the eyes of even when you get a house they want to know your criminal record right. you know what I mean so it's like that's something that you got to carry with you and uh it was very hard to stop caring about money to stop worrying about things to learn how to be optimistic and to and to also just understand like this isn't real bro <laughs> like mm-hmm. This isn't a naturally occurring thing. Like, this shit don't function like the trees function. They don't function the way the birds do. Right. This, this is, is all something constructed. That, it's all constructed. Mm-hmm. And when I figured this out, it was like, okay, the spell's been broken. The veil has been lifted. How do I move forward? How do I, like, maintain? And oftentimes it's about using your voice. Yeah. Speaking on it because... I don't know how many other people I didn't have. I had no clue. <clears throat> all these people felt me. I didn't have mm-hmm. no clue the stuff I was saying would attract thirty four thousand people to follow me. Right. You know what I mean? And it's like you can't even. I can't fit thirty four thousand people in my yard. You know what I mean? That's <laughs> a lot of people. Right. So it's like, damn. Okay, I wasn't bugging. Like I'm not. It's tripping. not just me. It's not just me. The interesting thing about that is um, what I've noticed in the the last recent years is, you know, whenever millennials and Gen Z talk passionately about these systems and these things that are have been done for centuries, for decades, for years, um, we get called snowflakes, soft, lazy, (laughs) you know. So what's your rebuttal to people who look at what you're speaking on and saying, suck it up sink or swim <laughs> no nah, you just got duped and you can't put that on me right don't try to don't make it seem like i'm soft because you got duped mm. and, and you so you so ingrained in the system look these people are defending a system that they don't even benefit from mm-hmm. they only see the potential in it and the only reason they see the potential in it is because the potential of the system is made by the system and marketed to the consumer. So they'll right. tell you, look, come down now, come down now. 
for today only. You can get a, a ten thousand dollar car for nine thousand dollars if you come tomorrow. It's eleven thousand, and people are like, we gotta hurry up and go get the car. And you just <laughs> you're only saving a thousand dollars, right? Not only mention that, like it ain't gonna be worth nothing but five when you pull off the lot. Like you said, but, so you spoke on immediacy too, kind of like um, yeah. immediate gratification. I think celebrity culture plays a big part into how we are um, marketed to and the things that we find are place value and importance on, but doesn't necessarily do anything for us. And I'm not saying like, don't enjoy like the things in life, like in luxury. I, I am a really big, big advocate for not delaying gratification all the time like if i'm working hard i'm gonna give myself damn a starbucks or a damn you yeah, know what i'm saying yeah, yeah, take myself yeah, yeah. on a date or something see it's not this rigid thing like they trying to make it seem right you don't have to like bro i'm not saying you have to be in a loincloth and go <laughs> live in somebody woods you know what i'm saying like i'm not being unrealistic about it right right um but like that top that you got on right now Mm -hmm. you saw that and you liked that so you bought that right it wasn't the craze of instagram and now you like i gotta get them you know these tops you know what i'm saying like i gotta get it mm -hmm. i never seen nobody wear carhartt and just like that was their whole little shtees i just seen it and i like how it. i felt i know i work I, I know i could work in it and still look good mm -hmm. and do my job and on top of that if i ain't at work i still look good in it and i like it you know what i'm saying so it was, it was my idea to buy. What mm -hmm. I'm saying to people is like, stop being so easily sold because mm -hmm. they depend on your attention and your, you know, for you to be easily to turn over because, you know, sales is, you know, they even got, bro, the crazy thing to me is like, they even know like the psychology of colors and how it's going to make us react. Oh, so yeah. So this is not a foolish system we're up against, but we are not yeah. foolish people. Right. And you don't have to be like, you have to get on the offense of this thing. So when people call us snowflakes, well, I'm a snowflake because I'm saying the shit that you was thinking every day when you was mad at your boss, but you ain't <laughs> had enough to say it, but you went home and beat the shit out your wife. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying like right. your family felt the effects of this system too. But you went to work and smiled and put your head down and did your thing with your little lunch pail. We ain't on that no more. Because it's because we see that it's and we see that it's not beneficial. And also, this country ain't set up for us to work 30 years nowhere. Right. They still right. in people's they as soon as people ready to draw social security, something happened. Oh, now you can't draw your social security. Or you can't even have a retirement. The whole the 2008 recession, people weren't getting their pensions. You know what exactly. I'm saying? They put the, they put their their pensions right. They backed it up in these corporations, housing market, and their whole life savings. Yeah, gone just like that. Gone. gone. And it's like we 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 were growing up when that was happening. You know what I'm saying? We right, were just right. coming into the workforce and everything. We saw this happen to our parents, our grandparents. Why would I invest the most in important system. commodity, which is my life? my time right. into a system that I know does not care about me. I will participate because this is the society that I live in, but that doesn't mean that I'm going to do it foolishly or blindly. And I'm not going to be quiet. <laughs> I'm not going to be quiet about it. I'm not going to shut up and like, you know, like, I'm not just going to shut up and play ball with y'all, bro. Right. Because and like the thing is too, it's like, there's this mentality of, well, if you're not offering a solution, then, then you like, can't say anything. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, you know, my thing is this, bro. And I, a, a lot of people don't want, they, they will say, well, we're, we're entitled or we're lazy. Mm -hmm. Um, You working 10 hours a day, six days a week for 30 years for the same company. And you still ain't got nothing to show for it. That ain't got nothing to do with your work ethic. You got exploited. Right. And that's and, really what capitalism is. And it's hard is. for you to come to terms with the fact that you've been exploited because you bought in. Mm -hmm. You had bought, you had enough to buy the house and the car and, the, and have the picket fence, but you were scraping by. It just looked good. 
You know what I mean? And then that's the keeping up with the Joneses thing. Like the thing that I never understood about keeping up with the Joneses is that Joneses ain't even have shit. Like the Joneses. Still don't know. I guess that, that was a TV show, right? <laughs> it was something. I, I I just remember that like the whole idea of it was like the Joneses was trying to impress everybody. Mm. And they was going broke trying to impress everybody. And everybody else started going broke trying to keep up with them. Well, that's that's true representation of what what's happening today. I think the most interesting part is like <laughs> I I shouldn't have to be rich to be comfortable. And so that's, you know, that's kind of what I named this episode. Like I shouldn't have to be rich to be comfortable. Absolutely. And this idea that I feel like they sell us escapism in the form of, oh, you, yeah, you, the American dream is, is right here. It's possible, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, And we don't realize just how out of touch with each other sometimes that we are. So going back to um, talking about my employer um, and how they were saying like, yeah, like, you know, the whole relocation thing, which is great, very sweet, but she asked a specific question. She was like, Oh, um, are you looking to rent or are you looking to buy? I, if I could buy, <laughs> I would have bought. <laughs> I would have bought already. And and sometimes what I realize in conversation with other people is they really don't. They, you know what I'm saying? They don't wrap they're their live, mind they're around. They just live in a bubble, and I'm and it's not their. Uh, Right, I don't, I don't blame them, but it just, yeah, it just lets me know just how to, out of yeah. touch we are with one another for it to be because for some people, I, I do have that resource. But I think another thing was like, oh, can you uh, ask someone for a loan? Who am I to? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, bro, they, they just people don't call understand. Me. <laughs> they don't understand <sighs> people who have more privilege in this society. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is not necessarily a black and white thing either. There's some black people that have this same privilege. Um, but when somebody can't co-sign for you because they credit fucked up, like mm -hmm. your folks credit fucked up, they can't uh, co-sign for you. Oh, they um, don't have enough income to even to even think about show, doing that. Right. You don't have, <laughs> have any anybody that can invest in your future and your fa and your family. Um, you know, you don't have. I love how you put get, that. I never had words to articulate it. You don't have anybody to invest in your future. I, I love that so much. I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, but, like, I, you know, we didn't get the cars at 16. And the, you know, like... First time I got my car, I was 22 and I brought it. And at the time, my family didn't have a car. Yeah, I bought the first, <laughs> the first time I had um, me and my wife, uh, she was pregnant. And her grandma had this old 91 Chevy Corsica. And she was like, man, I can't give it to y'all, but y'all could buy it for like $600. And I was driving that joint at 20, 21. I ain't had no license because my license was suspended because of previous things. Right. And, but I had to go to work. You know what I'm saying? I was like, you know what? I'm going to just pray down and get pulled over. Mm -hmm. And like, that's the only thing I can do. And see, like, that's a reality that a lot of people don't have to come to terms with. I'm going to risk my freedom every time I go just to make sure I can go to work. Right. And you know, like. Driving without insurance. I know I had a couple of classmates and friends and stuff that had, they've had to do it. I don't have enough money to pay for this every month, but this isn't something that they necessarily check on. But I know like, at least with my insurance in my state, like they send you from like the DMV and stuff like, yo, yo, your insurance lapse. And if you don't take care of this, your license is going to be suspended. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. That so, is a, you know, that's cool. But see, bro, like, I know, I remember when I moved out here, I'm going to tell you, okay. So it's how things come full circle, right? So I was end up living with, my aunts and um when I had as I got in a car accident right mm -hmm. and I do not like them people yeah you I heard you say that on one of the TikToks yeah so I don't like these folks but my wife was like ah we don't have no other option and I was like bro just call your grandma bro but they was on the outs right. Right. and I was like you I was like I said Deanna you really don't understand these people you don't know what you're getting us into you don't know the mind games that they're going to play, like mm -hmm. the level of narcissism in that house. 
also the level of just like every they just not some they just not good people to me. Right. And it was it took her a week to figure. She was like, "Oh, these motherfuckers, like, this is crazy." <laughs> She's like, "I don't even see how you grew up here." I was like, "Bro, I'm trying to tell you, like, why you think I stay as far away from them as possible?" Right. So, I had no bread. The check came through from the car. The the last car I had was only worth eighteen hundred dollars. I wow. was like, "Oh my god, how am I gonna get a car like that?" I said, I'm finna have to get some bullshit, but I, I was like, it don't mm-hmm. matter. I found a car for, for like, it was 1600. It's still, it's sitting in the front right now. It don't run. <laughs> it need a starter and everything, but it's the car that got me here. So I was like, right. I ain't gonna give up on you. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna find the parts to get you back going. But <laughs> I had $1,600 and I had to pay to get the plates and everything mm-hmm. so I could drive around legal and you know you get like I got uh I didn't have no bread to get insurance so you know I was living in Riverdale mm-hmm. and I was like just riding around like no insurance I'm like fuck man I can't do this I was like but I gotta get up out of here right and I called my partner I said bro I need $200 to get some insurance on my car so I can get to Alabama and he was like no no worries just he was like pack your shit he was like, I'm on your way to Alabama. Stop by here, get the $200, activate the insurance in my driveway, and then make it safe to where you're going. Right. He did that for me. And we've been staying here for the last three years, right? hmm And she afford, her grandmother afforded me the opportunity to go get my CDL because she said, don't look for no job. She said, you don't need no job. You need a trade. Yeah. She's like, you need something where when you leave here, you can't just get fired. You can't just and have no more opportunities. You mm-hmm. need something that's solid, right? So, you know, I'm so blessed in the fact that, you know, I had these, I had this friend and I had this woman uh, to provide an opportunity for me. Now, look, the company that I just started working for, that now I'm a 3% owner of the company, mm-hmm. was started by the same partner that gave me them $200 to get Hey, blessings, <laughs> yeah. blessings, blessings. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes. But I'm also very aware that, that just don't happen for everybody. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like. The any, privilege was the connection and the fact the, that you had the, the people available. and I had some privilege. And, so, and I have uh, to acknowledge that. I'm telling you, I, I have had conversations with people where it's just like, y'all, I, I am where I am because specific things happen in my life, not because I deserved them or I was better than other people. It was just there. The opportunity was there. And I just happen to be the right person in the right place that's at the it. right time. It's but you know, I did. nepotism and I like that's the thing that we was just talking about. Mm-hmm. When we when we moved out of our parents' house, we didn't have the luxury of nepotism. We didn't right. know the person that could take us to the next level. Mm-hmm. So a lot of these kids in college are going to their parents' alumni, and they have people like other mm-hmm. members in their alma mater that are connected to the point where, hey, when you get out, you can come work in my law firm right. as a paralegal until you pass your bar exam and then whoop, 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 like it's already set up for you to be successful. Mm-hmm. And I don't appreciate people who don't recognize the advantages given to them and look back on other people with none of those advantages like they're lazy. You yeah, had like- doors open for you, fam. You didn't have to kick no doors down. Or because, yes, nobody's saying that it was just given to you. Hard work was still something you did. But that doesn't mean your hard work was was bigger or greater than the next person. It meant and that somebody your hard work worked harder than you. Plus, yeah. you know what I'm saying? All Some, the, the most of these people resources. work harder than you. And right. they don't have any resources. Right. And so, like, you know, we could talk about, like, racism and white supremacy. We know that this system is ultimately designed to benefit them. But mm-hmm. as a man... Nobody's talking about the my the autonomy of my body, but that is something you have to deal with. Yeah. As a light skinned man, I know that I'm not viewed uh, as as confrontational or as I, I'm not as threatening as some of my darker mm-hmm. skinned friends. So, like, I know that I have certain things that give me an advantage in this society just from how it's constructed and how it views things. Right. But I'd be a fool to sit here and tell you that I don't use them things to my advantage 
mm-hmm. and leave the door open for somebody else behind. Them. Right. Same thing. And that's like, how you're supposed to do it. Acknowledge where you are. Yes, I'm dark skinned, but I'm also smaller too. So yes, mm. my dark skin gets used against me, but my size doesn't. The right. fact that my voice is a little bit higher than most women or some women also is an advantage. So it's just like recognizing even the nuances in your own privileges. It's just like, it's okay for me to say like, yes, these things are my reality. And not only am I suppressed, but I'm also privileged in these ways. Like they, they both coexist in my life, just like everybody. Well, then also too, like, you know, <laughs> The thing is, too, like, there are certain, there are certain things, there are certain advantages you would get, like, okay, let's say we go to a gig, me and you, we interviewing for the same position. Mm-hmm. And let's say the dude interviewing us is attracted to petite, dark-skinned women. Mm-hmm. You're probably going to get that job. Right. But you may be just as qualified as me, and that don't take away from that. Right. It's always about the interpersonal relationships. Mm-hmm. And, like, the thing is, is like we can make this stuff very simple, but, but the reality it of it is, it is, it, it, yeah, it is. And if we would just recognize that these little minor complexities do play a part, and acknowledge it and accept it, like it is not that hard. Like for the life of me, I can't understand how somebody like how a white person can sit here and not recognize all of the advantages that they have, <laughs> but. I'm not going to sit here and argue with you with that because if you if it's falling on deaf ears, I'm screaming into the void. I'm cool on that. Right. As long as I recognize it and I know how to maneuver accordingly, I'm good. Yeah, I, my my thing, my newest thing has been I'm not going to sit here and have a pointless conversation. The reason, yeah, the I ain't purpose, educating nobody. Yeah, the purpose of me having conversations is so that I can explore and I can learn and possibly teach. But I'm not going to sit here and just have a pointless conversation with somebody who's already made their mind up. So if that means talking to people who are racist, either covert or overt, right? that's talking to somebody that's misogynistic, sexist, colorist. All that. If that's talking to somebody who is, you know what I'm saying? Just alpha male ignorant, dudes, like alpha male dudes that talk Red pill like, popping. Yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> Look, bro, do your thing. Just keep it away from me. Yeah, like if you, I, I've had people that want to have like these very inflammatory conversations just to to I don't know, showcase what they they think is their knowledge and their bravado. No, I'm good. <laughs> I'm, I'm just in a space of like I'm gonna talk to you. Like I'm gonna talk to people like you. I'm gonna right. talk to people that share my same ideals, that understand my perspective, mm-hmm. even if we walk two different paths in this life. Um, you know, we have uh, one thing in common that is that we black. We understand exactly what we're up against in this country right. um but at the same time like i'll never understand the plight of a woman because right. i don't know what that is like but it doesn't mean that i get to denounce your truths i don't get to step on your truths as if you're lying i mm-hmm. have to listen and be empathetic and under and try to understand what you're going through and once i have that understanding like i have a black mom i have a black wife i got a black daughter right i need to understand these things because If I'm always trying to take the side of the opposition or the side of a man or be red pilled out, like, well, you know, these bitches be lying. Like, bro, come on, bro. Or even the the, the sound was, I had to to tell one guy, I was like, I had to bring to his attention. I was like, anytime me and you have these conversations, no matter what I say, no matter what the situation, you always take the side of the man. Why is that? I was like, you interject your own personal experiences in something that is very specific outside of you just so that you can project, you know what I'm saying? Like, instead yeah, of actually I'm, and, listening. And, and, and they take it so personal. Like, you're talking yeah. about them. I'm talking to you. I'm talking with you. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I noticed it in group settings that my wife has a very, she's very introspective and she sees things in ways that I don't even see them. But people don't want to listen to what she has to say. And mm-hmm. I know that that's an issue that women deal with is not oh, being yeah. heard. Oh, yeah. So it's like, I'm going to, I'm going to always make sure that if I'm amongst women that I'm listening, mm-hmm. I'm going to make sure that if I'm amongst uh, people that are a part of the LGBTQ community, I'm listening to them because I right. don't understand that. And right. it's not, I don't need to live the experience. I just need to listen to the people who are. Right. And, and be it's compassionate not, in some way. And right, I think it's that, not complex, bro. Right. I, I feel like 
a lot of times we we miss that piece where because we haven't experienced ourselves then we don't know how to be compassionate to someone else who may be experiencing the things that for us seem so outlandish but I don't know it's it's <laughs> I think that yeah. plays a role into how we look at this whole uh conversation that we've been having too like the lack of compassion for each other when it comes to whether those privileges exist the oppression exists like all of that stuff fits into how we deal with each other on multiple levels and the more you just stop sometimes and listen right because yeah. just because I don't want to have a conversation with somebody who has a different perspective to me doesn't mean I'm not listening Shit, you can get on this app and you hear all kinds of stuff yeah, <laughs> every right. day right every day and that doesn't mean I don't listen I listen and I decide okay I don't think this is helpful this ain't for me yeah <laughs> The same for me. Yeah, this same for me. I don't think this is helpful. I've, I've I'm heard not it. Commenting. I, you know what? You know how easy it is to swipe, do this? Mm-hmm. It takes mm-hmm. more energy to press and start typing away your counter position. Like, bro, listen, bro. You're not interested. You're not. I, I, people tell me, like, people try to come to me in my comments all the time. And I'm like, oh, okay. Had. Listen, you're gonna get, had. You're going to get no likes and no comments. And no attention. Just, <laughs> and no attention. And look, I've had people where I've said, I don't, I don't even know what videos it was, but it would it would be like mostly just love and good energy in my comments. But there is always these these few, you know, mostly men, I will say that they'd be in the comments and, you know, putting their own problematic perspectives and just projecting something that wasn't even, you know what I'm saying, it was missing the whole point of what I was saying. And instead of be going back and forth, delete. <laughs> I, I'm not doing you this. know what I seen uh, <laughs> yeah because sometimes when you, when when people get a little too outraged you can get blocked bro mm-hmm. you you can get deleted because like I don't even got time for that energy to exist in my thing right but I remember you had posted this thing and you was like uh, being a people pleaser had me having bad sex mm-hmm. and then it was dudes in the comments like well they just weren't putting it down right like, bro. <laughs> That's not, <laughs> bro. This has nothing to do with you, bro. Like, tell you, my my woman being somebody that came from people pleasing, she would tell me like, you know, we got together, we started having kids and stuff, um, and you know, I was gaining a little weight, and she like, man, I'm petite, like, you know, I ain't want to say nothing, but you put a little pressure on me, like the you know pressure, <laughs> and it's like, and I'm like, uh taking it all personal like oh I guess I'll go you know like I'm, I'm getting personal like I'm taking mm-hmm. it as an attack instead of listening to her and worrying about her comfort because this sex thing ain't a, on a one-way street it ain't just right. about my pleasure and so it's like I'm like well I guess I'll go and roll in the gym tomorrow like trying to be sarcastic and being mm-hmm. defensive but then I start listening and it's like well what you need me to do you know what I'm saying like what right. you you know what I'm saying how can we because I don't want to just be in here just getting my nut off. Like, that just ain't how this going to work. <laughs> right. Because what's going to happen? Like, she's going to eventually, you know what I'm saying, some slim dude going to come along talking right, and you know what I'm saying, going to scoop my gal right. up. You right, right. right. Just because I don't want to listen. <laughs> but you know what? I I think it was that video that had a lot of them, because it was um, being a good girl, had me having bad sex. Oh, that's what and it was. And it was so it was. many men. What's wrong with being good? It was women too. Oh wrong. my god! That's the bro- so y'all just gonna be out here just having sex with anybody? Is that what? Yeah, but I see said? now they try to make you see a like oh so now you're just gonna be a whore like no <laughs> right? <fam>. It was <laughs> a lot. It's still some up there, but it was a lot that like they were just really ho teppy and <laughs> I was just like, all right. Let's... You know you ain't supposed to have no uh, menstrual cycle like but <laughs> stop eating <laughs> corn. <laughs> <laughs> Broccoli is man made like. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> it's in the stove, bro. I need some greens, bro. Just relax. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Whew, I got all I the way off topic. <laughs> I do not live in the jungles of Zimbabwe, fam. Like, Okay. Coconuts <laughs> and shit every day. Fresh. <laughs> if you don't get out my face. <laughs> papayas. I'm, I'm not paying $50 plus $25 shipping to get a sour sauce, fam. Just let me got down. Let me do the best with what I got, bro. You know what I'm saying? Look, okay, because a fried bologna sandwich ain't never hurt nobody. Oh, yeah. God, it ain't. <laughs> that got me through, you hear me? <laughs> that, and that's Make spaghetti. a little X in the middle so it don't puff up. You feel yeah. me? A little mustard on the bread. Well, I was telling people that, and nobody was like, believe me. I said, so y'all just let y'all bologna like puff up? You got to put nah, a little slit in there so it get burnt in the little inside, in the, too. Yeah, yeah, and if you keep it flat, you feel me? 
toasty. People toast that bread and throw some mustard. Yeah, show <laughs> some. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I, I did say um, I find marketing to appeal to our need to escape the tragedy of our system. Um, and again, you spoke on the immediacy of buying things uh, that mean very little. And so I, I noticed that within myself too, like getting pulled into that trap where it's just like, oh, I got to take a vacation or I need to spruce up my apartment or, you know what I'm saying? All those things are great, but I had to really ask myself like, okay, where is all this coming from? Like, you know, and it was coming from like, dang, I'm not fully at peace or even completely happy with my situation right now. And I'm trying to find any little way to escape but those ways of escape are consumerism and they're very into, expensive yes they. feeding into you know capitalism because what i'm doing to make money and to sustain myself isn't pleasing me and that is not a failure of me it's a failure of our system because things should be simple enough where i don't have to find these little bits and pieces to escape my reality you know yeah um, you ever bought something and immediately like, uh, mm-hmm. but you know what? Damn. I had to be careful with that too, because, um, I think a little opposite of you, I've had like a weird relationship with money because of my background. Whereas I know a lot of people get to the point where they spend a lot because they don't have financial, um, you know, literacy. I used to save, well, I still save, but like hoard money. No, nah, we well, see. Uh, I was never that. I was yeah. like, I ain't, I ain't never had shit, but I have so you go, spend but it. It took me forever because I, for me, I'm just like, if I spend it and I ain't got it no more, I ain't got no more to, I ain't got no way to go get it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I can't reach in, to nobody to go get it, which I think is everybody's story. It's just manifested in not everybody. It's a lot of people's story. It's just manifested in a different way with me. Absolutely. So, I always felt guilt whenever I bought myself something. And then when uh, I finally broke myself out of that, I was overspending. And so now I'm trying to balance out that whole, that whole thing. And so um, see, here's another thing, like to speak back to privilege, like I'm not good with saving money, but my wife is. So I just sent her all the money. Listen, I tried <laughs> you know that with an ex of mine and it ain't work. <laughs> <laughs> it was a couple of days. <laughs> I did like one one of the guys that I was dating. I think I've told this story before on LBF, but me and him were talking about moving in together, and so I knew I was better with finances. And I was like, okay, cool, let's get a joint savings account. We'll save up so that by the time it's time to move, we got a couple of you know months of rent. We we'll have money to get the furniture and stuff we needed. We're supposed to be putting stuff in there every couple of weeks, every month. More and more, he dipping into it for different reasons, right? So then he exhausts his little half. And he started right. looking at my half, and I'm like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." You come yeah, over yeah. here. At, at this point, it's my savings account again, because you right on <laughs> God, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I never yeah, man. Did. I'm I've always been, but it it come from me. It come from me getting into the street where it's like, "Oh, nigga, we just thankful to be here." So yeah, you know what I mean. At the end of the day, we we could have got locked up today. Shit could have went left today. Man, let's, let's spend, spend it. Shit. Let's spend we'll, it. We'll get it back tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? Like we'll go back out. We're gonna hustle yeah. again tomorrow. But then at some point, it's like, okay, we keep starting from zero every day. Yeah. And it's like I can't keep starting from zero, and that changed my mentality. But then when I got out of the street, and I got all that criminal stuff behind me, all the probation was done, and I was working legit get, get gigs, it was like okay, fuck, man, I still ain't making a lot of money. I want to buy something nice for myself. And I kind of did fall into that trap of, like, just keep spending, spending, spending. And then I'm getting defensive Mm -hmm. because she want to save because I ain't good at saving. And I'm like, well, you know, let me try it out. But it's like I always have an excuse to want to buy something. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I just had to figure out, like, this system ain't going to work for me. It ain't going to work for us. It's not sustainable. So let me do what I need to do in order to be, have something reliable and build some type of foundation. Mm-hmm. But, you know, yeah, yeah. Cause that hoarding money thing, bro, I'd be like, you know, they'll try to make you feel bad for having ho- ho- like saving too. Like you need to be investing like, oh, slow Can roll, I just bro. have my money? <laughs> <laughs> Can I slow just uh, invest it in myself ain't enough? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I had one of those uh, too. I am, 
I am. Um, I know you don't want to pause for a second time, but no, my sorry. joint did go back down to like it, I'm back at five. I know this Zoom is eating up your your battery. Yeah, it's eating it up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, if you want to wrap, if you got one last like, I know you have yeah. an outline, but no, if you no. want to find a find find a place to really wrap it up, because we're gonna have to keep um taking like a 30 minute break gonna be okay. dark out of here, man. nah it's okay we can uh wrap up and then you know if we ever want to come back and do a second episode we always can do that yeah we definitely do part two for sure yeah um so the last question i'll ask is um billions are being sent to other countries in crisis um given to corporations in time of war and recession like what are your thoughts about that kind of stuff happening um as a citizen it's fucked up because y'all could be using that to deal with poverty, with homelessness. Mm -hmm. Y'all could be using billions of dollars to offset um, the financial struggles of the nation. Um, as well as like, you know, y'all owe black folks some money. That's a, that's a conversation for another time. Cause Where, listen, is that no? You know what I'm because saying? Because reparations were paid, but it was no, paid no, to the yeah. slave owners. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. So when so we 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 you know what I'm saying we need to get that back. You know what I'm saying? But at the same time, that's a different story for a different day. I don't understand geopolitical agendas. I don't know who got a rub, who back. I don't know. You know, I don't understand. I, I'm not gonna sit here and act like I understand how this money gets spent on that level. I'm not on that level. I ain't mm -hmm. in the one percent. I ain't in government. Um I, I I don't I'm not in the United Nations. I don't understand why. Right. But I will say from a citizen's point of view, it's very fucked up that my gas is five dollars a gallon, but you send billions to a country that ain't got nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. it's I don't very know now Ukra I don't I know no Ukrainians, bro. And and I feel for them. And it's not that we don't, but it's just like, can we take care of home before y'all try to insert your political exactly. and social power in the world? Like, can you take right. care of us first? Like, yeah, we've, we got the most powerful military, bro. Like, ain't nobody coming for us. Can we get down have that? Like, because it's, it's just like this, right? Let's say me and you, well, let's say we live together and we are two months behind on our light bill. Mm -hmm. And my mama called and say, I'm behind on my light bill. And I give her the money for her light bill. And you like, nigga, we too much. We ain't have time. We don't got time for this. We, 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 right. we ain't in a position to save nobody right now, bro. Mm -hmm. We got to save ourselves. You couldn't just tell them we was behind. So like, it, it just is disheartening because it's like, damn, bro. Like more and more, every time we turn around, they show us more and more. They don't care about us. They don't care about the struggles of the common man, of the citizen. Uh, but when they can gain some type of geopolitical advantage, they'll spend billions on it. Mm -hmm. That's crazy to me. Right. It's crazy. I, I, I share the same sentiment. And um, I really do feel like at some point, um, a lot of the things that are in place in our society is going to come crumbling down. We're seeing it being chipped away. Um, and the way that these things are being pushed, whether we're talking about finances or the shit that's going on with the Supreme Court, none of it is sustainable. And right. um, I really do feel like we are on the brink of something very destructive <laughs> about to happen. Yeah. It, it it does feel like the writing is on the wall. Like I'm struggling every day to commit to moving out because it's like, uh, I know I have to, but by what's gonna happen? Like, bro, right. I don't want the world to come crashing down the day I move out. You know what I mean? But yeah. at the same time, I have to remember that I am a spiritual being and like this system is just a matrix and I don't have yeah. to, I don't have to become a part of it. I don't need to buy into it. I don't need to like allow the fear of what they dealing with up at the top to affect me in such a way where it's like, I pause my life. Mm -hmm. So I got to keep pushing. I got to keep moving, but it is just like, it does feel like we are on the brink of like major destruction. Right. And I think a lot of it is just like, this country is changing. Uh, the people that they never expected to be intelligent and and um, have some type of influence are the biggest influences in the world. Yes. And I think that, you know, if you ever read the ISIS papers by uh, Francis 
Dr. Cress Wilson, she talks about like uh, white genetic annihilation mm -hmm. and how because they are genetically recessive, you can get rid of them through sex, you know what I mean? So I think that this power of this country is, as it being a white country is slipping away and they doing anything they can to maintain control. Right. And Ukraine is a, a completely white country. I don't think they ever sent billions to Iraq, you know what I mean? They sent yeah. guns though. Could have sent billions back to Africa, billions were stolen, but you know. Man, you can send me back. Yeah. <laughs> I just play. I just play. Okay, fragile. Put fragile on the box. Okay? Right. Candle me with care, got in. Nah, my folks had to build this shit up. I'm gonna stay here. That's what I said. <laughs> That's what I said. I was like, and if you love something, you can be honest about it, good and the bad. But on that note, um, I don't want to hold you anymore. Um, I want you to go ahead and plug where they can follow you and listen to your music. Okay, well, you could follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Deontay underscore Kyle. That's D-E-A-N-T-E -E underscore K-Y-L-E. Um, that is my music name going forward. But uh, all the music I released last year is under Negus Deontay, N-E-G-U-S Deontay. And that's on any streaming platform. You can follow me on YouTube. Follow me on Spotify. Um, and just stay tuned. I'll be having more updates when I move. I'll be building up my own studio. And you'll see a lot more coming from my creative side. That's awesome. You guys, please check out all his content. It really is. It spoke to me so much that I had to get him on the podcast. And y'all yeah, know sure. that's not a small feat because I, it's a selective few people that I invite to have conversations with me. But thank you, Deontay, for having this conversation with us. And, you know, I, I know a lot of people are going to be checking out your content because of it. But um, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Um, you guys know me. I'm Kay Antoinette. I'm your host. And you can follow me on Instagram at Kay Antoinette underscore the blogger. You can also follow the Let's Build Futures page at let's underscore build underscore futures and visit letsbuildfutures.com for blog posts, podcast episodes, and more. Also check out LBF Podcasts on YouTube because those are where the visual episodes are. And uh, y'all do know I have a TikTok, but I never remember the name. So uh, if you find me up there, good job. If not, then <laughs> maybe next time, maybe one day you'll be scrolling, and you'll see my face. But yeah, um, yeah, this has been an awesome conversation for our working hard or is it hardly working series? And we're out, you guys. All right. Yes,